Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, or should I just simply say greetings from yours truly, Mr. Panuka from right here at Panuka Farm. And it's such a lovely, lovely you know, afternoon. I'm just strolling through um, you know, this uh, highway. This is one of our highways here at Panuka Farm. That's what we call it. Um, and so it's always, you know, lovely to come through to you, um, to share some, you know, farming, you know, tidbits. Um, and just in case this is your first time, uh, being on the Panuka Farm, uh, YouTube channel, uh, we are based right here in, uh, Zambia, Southern Africa, uh, just in case you don't know where, you know, Zambia is located. Um, and we are actually a land, you know, locked, you know, country surrounded about is it eight or nine countries yeah uh we've got you know on the northern part uh the drc tanzania uh we've got angola namibia botswana zimbabwe uh, mozambique malawi uh did i miss any of the countries i don't think so yeah so those are the countries that uh, actually do surround um zambia where uh, panuka farm uh, is uh, located one of the main questions that I usually do get is, uh, Mr. Panuka, um, which environment is better? You know, should you have, you know, greenhouses um, or net houses or shed net, as it were, or you just do, um, you know, uh, production in, you know, open fields? Um, so that's one of the, um, you know, uh, topical, you know, questions. Um, and so if you remember, I think in your mathematics, um, lessons, uh, remember there was, uh, the either, you know, or, or, and, um, so it's a question of, uh, should you look at, you know, growing in a shed net such as, you know, this one or a greenhouse or a tunnel, you know, sometimes there's a bit of semantics around what qualifies to be a greenhouse or a tunnel, you know? based on just the ventilation you know capacities but for today let's just settle with this being a greenhouse or tunnel versus this as a shed net okay so the question is should this be a question of either or or and should you have both or just um you know um one environment so that's stuff that um i just want to just uh, quickly you know run you through um, and I will do this from the perspective of what we call, you know, um, climate, you know, adaptation. Okay. So hope that will not be too technical, uh, but something that we can actually all, uh, relate, uh, with. So let's dive in, uh, into today's, uh, lesson. The concept of climate adaptation, you know, recognizes that within a year, um, you actually be affected by, you know, different, you know, climatic, you know, conditions, you know, summer comes with increased you know heat um and there could be also excess rain sometimes even drought by the way um so different you know climatic you know uh conditions actually do come uh into play but the issue is does you know your production you know systems and environments uh, enable you to basically survive or conform you know to the different changing uh climatic conditions so if you get to summer um, where there's a lot of, you know, sun, uh, much as plants actually do love, you know, um, the sun, but when it's in excess, obviously you suffer, you know, stuff like, you know, excess, you know, evaporation, you irrigate immediately and then, you know, your crops are, are dry. So, but then how do you survive? How do you adapt from that excess, you know, um, heat um, that is leading to excess, you know, uh, evaporation? If there's also a lot of rain, what happens? How do you adapt, you know, to that, you know, um, situation? And again, if it's too cold, how do you survive? Because remember, with farming, you want to make sure that you're actually in production throughout um, the entire year. And that can only be possible if you have the production environments that can actually enable you uh, to change, you know, your production systems, you know, as the climatic conditions uh, do change. So that's in simple terms, what climate adaptation basically uh, mean. Now, this, you know, will enable you uh, to understand why we have actually different, you know, uh, growing um, environments. One of the environments that we have, obviously, is a shed net. 
such as this one. And we use a 40% you know, net uh, in this one, but we have the other kinds of uh, shed net. And we do crops, um, you know, such as iceberg you know, lettuce, which is right here. And right now in Zambia, we are actually getting into summer and pretty soon um, it's going to be very, very hot. Now, the issue is that once it gets very hot, uh, you want an environment that will enable you to basically um, allow for very good, you know, ventilation. And that's what this shed net allows you to. So you want that flexibility away from the greenhouses, which I'll actually talk about uh, pretty soon. But this kind of shed net allows you to still grow your crops um, with maximum, you know, aeration. Obviously, the downside is that uh, once you get to rain season, this net will obviously allow rain to come through. So meaning you can't actually control that. But for a season such as summer, that's good enough. And it will do exceptionally very well. So now away from the shed net, what happens then um, when you get to the rain season and you don't want too much, you know, um, water, because certain crops like English cucumber, certainly if you're actually going to grow it um, in open field uh, or in a shed net such as this one, you're actually going to have issues an onslaught of you know stuff like powder mildew, down mildew, um, and that's where you know this environment comes in. Okay, so part of climate adaptation now dictates that when you get to a season like rain season when it's you know pouring, you kind of move away from you know um, a shed net like that one, and then you actually migrate most of your production uh, into these tunnels because with these tunnels water does not go in and so you can actually control quite a lot of you know things and mostly um the the, the aspect um of uh rains like i indicated i think earlier on the the whole concept of climate adaptation is that it should actually allow for flexibility um in your growing you know environment that means you basically have to have different you know uh, environments uh for growing your crops so it's not a question of should you have just either the greenhouses, tunnels, or just shed nets. I think there's benefits in actually having, you know, the, the different growing environments so that it allows for some flexibility. Uh, should there be some climatic, you know, changes, uh, you can have that flexibility to, you know, adapt as it were if we have to actually stick to that concept uh, so that you move uh, into other growing environments that will actually enable you uh, to stay in production uh, even when there's kind of adverse, you know, uh, impact of some of the climatic conditions, whether it's um, excess sunlight uh, or as it were, excess, you know, um, rains. But one other issue that I must also indicate that with these tunnels that we've got here, um, they obviously don't have that top vent, you know, to allow for the escape, you know, excess, you know, air that has, you know, kind of been built up. Um, so, yes, they're quite good. Um, and, and I think that's the best environment that we've got at the moment in terms of production of crops. And I think if you have been on this Panuka Farm, you know, YouTube channel, obviously you've seen the quality of crops that actually do come out of these, um, you know, tunnels. But um, um, we are also looking at how do we improve, you know, the ventilation of these tunnels. And I think the next generation of tunnels that we'll actually be looking at are the ones that have got like, you know, a top, you know, vent at the top. Um, but these will obviously remain very useful, um, especially I think the period between April to about August. Uh, these are actually able to store a lot of, you know, um, heat, uh, which is very good at that time when it's actually cold. So again, it just goes to the same concept that we talked about around climate, you know, adaptation, uh, having different, you know, growing environments that enables that flexibility for you. Uh, to move to different, you know, growing environments is actually, um, you know, very good. Obviously, these environments are not cheap, and I always want to emphasize that um, some of these growing environments do not come uh, cheap. So it's 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 a progression. It's not something that you probably have to look at, you know, from day one. Uh, you want, you know, to kind of move in this, you know, growing um, environment. It's a process, okay. 
Um, and I do only recommend for you to actually get, you know, headaches around trying to migrate here when you've got a proof of concept. Um, and when we talk about the proof of concept, you've got, you know, a product where there's a willing buyer. Um, you're not doing what I call to whom it may concern, you know, farming. Um, that's when you probably have to look at, um, you know, these, you know, growing um, environments. Otherwise, um, you can do quite a lot of farming um, in open fields. And we've demonstrated that I think in our first three to four years of farming, we actually did grow most of the crops um, in open fields. So don't be, um, you know, uh, worked out. By the way, the same environment that we use uh, for greenhouses is the same kind of materials that we actually use for our uh, nursery. And you can see how well um, it's doing. Um, we would not recommend you doing a nursery in an environment that allows for you know rainfall because otherwise for the young seedlings like this you have quite a lot of challenges for you to see this level of uniformity again this protected environment comes in very um, handy so a shed net will probably not be a good idea for this kind of um, uh, environment so the key takeaways i think from you know this video is that um climate change is actually quite real um, and climatic you know, conditions actually are changing. Um, but one issue is that if you're actually going to do farming as a business, you need to understand that production consistency is a game changer, um, especially in horticulture farming. But I think in any form of farming, uh, consistent production, selling, is basically what drives you know, uh, your revenue. So you need to make sure that your growing environment allows you for that you know, consistent you know, production, um, and that's the more reason why even your, you know, growing environments must actually have, you know, that level of flexibility that enables you to be uh, in production uh, throughout, you know, the year. So I hope that helps just understand uh, and answer the question of whether you should just have a shed net or a greenhouse. I think having a combination is good, but only do it at the right time. Don't get worked out just when you're starting to think about having you know, um, all these environments, it's very costly. So wait until you've got a proof of concept for you to actually uh, migrate um, in that manner. All right, folks, so until next time, this has been uh, yours truly, one Mr. Panuka. Have a lovely you know, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're watching me from. Um, otherwise, it's such a lovely afternoon from where we are. So bye-bye.